Have you ever wondered what is the difference between a cortisone injection and a hyaluronic acid injection? In this video, I'm going to break down step by step their key differences and what my preferred injection is. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Sonam and I'm an interventional sport medicine doctor up here in Canada. Now today, I'm going to break down the key differences between a hyaluronic acid injection and a cortisone injection, as this is one of my most common injection questions I get in practice. Both cortisone and hyaluronic acid can be used to treat a variety of both tendon and joint pathologies. Let's review the key differences. Number one, what are they made of? So cortisone is an anti-inflammatory medication. It is like the intra-articular, intertendinous version of prednisone that people take by mouth. It goes by many names. So it is essentially a drug that is created by a pharmaceutical company. And then we use that to inject in different areas of the body. Hyaluronic acid, on the other hand, is a synthetic version of something we already have in our body. So usually they'll use bacterial cultures, sometimes they're animal derived depending on the different product, and it creates the hyaluronic acid that is innate in our body. So we have HA in our hair, skin, nails, and it's now in a lot of cosmetic products. So basically these companies are creating a synthetic version of hyaluronic acid that we can inject. Number two, the mechanism of action. So cortisone is an anti-inflammatory medication that once is injected into the body helps decrease both pain and inflammation by its anti-inflammatory properties. So it decreases all these inflammatory cytokines in the body that elicit both pain and swelling. So I tell people it's an injectable drug and those are its two mechanisms of action. Hyaluronic acid, on the other hand, works a little bit differently depending on whether or not you're using it for a tendon or a joint. So with a joint formulation, how it works is the hyaluronic acid gel is injected into the joint, it lubricates up the joint, it provides a nutritious um, a surrounding for the cartilage, and the one thing to know is joints don't get any blood flow in the actual joint. So the only way for cartilage to get nutrients is through the synovial fluid or the fluid in your joint. So by putting hyaluronic acid in there, not only is it lubricating the joint, but it's also providing a healthy joint environment and increasing healthy joint fluid production. That's how it treats pain. Now, the formulation for tendons works a little bit different. It actually has a bit of a regenerative capacity to it. So it's a gel-like injection that we inject over the tendon that we are trying to heal. And what it does is it creates a gel-like bandage that both treats pain, so it does treat some opioid receptors on there to help decrease pain, but also tells the body to bring in all the healing mediators to help heal that tendon, thereby helping to restore the function and the structure of that tendon. Number three, what can these injections be used for? Now I alluded to this when I was talking about the first two points, but now both cortisone and hyaluronic acid can be used to treat both tendon and joint pathologies. Number four, how effective are these medications? Cortisone injections are very effective, mainly because it's a very strong drug. So I quote people on average that 95 to 97% of my patients will respond positively to these injections. Hyaluronic acid injections are slightly different. Because they're working more on a, you know, a natural, maybe even a regenerative level, depending on whether or not we're using it in joints and tendons, I'd say that approximately 70 to 75% of patients receive positive benefit from this. Number five, aftercare instructions. So I have created separate aftercare instructions for both cortisone injections and hyaluronic acid injections that I'm gonna link into the description below. But the main thing to be aware of is with both injections, it is common to feel sore for about one to two days post-injection and then things settle down afterwards. I really encourage people to rest if I do a joint injection for approximately two days and then can it increase activity slowly thereafter. When it comes to a tendon injection, this is where it differs depending on whether or not you have cortisone or HA. With the cortisone injection, I tell people to rest that area if I'm injecting a tendon or a shoulder, for example, for a minimum of one week and then increase the activity slowly afterwards. The reason why is cortisone does have a side effect where it can weaken tendon for a short period of time. And if that happens, the tendon is at risk for further being damaged if you put too much load on it. So I err on the side of caution, tell people to rest for about a week and then slowly increase their activity afterwards. With my hyaluronic acid tendon injection, there are no restrictions, which is why I love using it so much. So I'm gonna link both of my detailed videos about my cortisone and my HA aftercare instructions in the description. Number six, how long do these injections take to work? So on average, cortisone injections will start to work within the first four to seven days following the injection. I do warn people that sometimes it can take up to two weeks, so don't write it off if it's not better right away within the first week after the injection. 
Hyaluronic acid injections, however, take approximately four to six weeks to start noticing differences. So I do warn people that there is a little bit of a delayed cliff before you start seeing the positive benefits. Number seven, how long do these injections work for? So on average, I tell people that cortisone injections are effective for approximately three to four months. However, some of my patients will receive up to six months of benefit. Now, hyaluronic acid injections are a little bit different depending on whether or not we're injecting a joint or a tendon. With joint injections, I put people that on average, they can last anywhere from six to 12 months. With the more severely arthritic knees lasting a bit less than the more mild cases. However, I have seen people with severe bone on bone arthritis get up to a year's benefit uh, with my monovisc or hyaluronic acid injection. Now, with the tendon option, the tendon option that I use for hyaluronic acid has a regenerative component to it. So in many cases, when I'm injecting it for patients, I'm not seeing them again unless they re-injure that tendon. So it's a little bit different than joints because there is that healing capacity to this injection. And with that healing capacity, it may last until the tendon is injured again, if it's ever injured again. Number eight, what are the side effect profiles of these two options? So what do they share? First off, with both of these injections, I have to use a needle to inject the area of the body. So risks of bleeding, infection, and a bit of post-injection pain are shared between the three of them. Risk of bleeding will go up if you're on aspirin or anticoagulants of any nature, although it's still minimal. Risk of infection is approximately one in 10,000, and I encourage people to keep the area clean following the injection. The risk of post-injection pain tends not to be too badly, mainly because I mix the injection with a lot of local freezing. However, pain afterwards will be different depending on the type of injection you may have received. So what are the differentiating side effects between cortisone and HA? The first one with cortisone is you can be prone to a post-injection flare. Approximately 10% of my patients can experience more pain for the first 24 to 48 hours after the injection, and then it will settle down afterwards. This is because they're reacting to the granular uh, molecules of cortisone in the body. The second big side effect I'll notice with cortisone is actually the bloodborne side effects. So 5% of the cortisone that we inject in a local site will get absorbed into the body. So some of my patients will note that their blood sugar and blood pressure numbers will increase for the first five to seven days following the injection. And because of this, some people will also experience headaches. So I am careful in my elderly patients or patients who are, you know, have particularly high blood pressure, blood sugar numbers to let them know to monitor this as this may very well increase post-injection. Then we have actual side effects to the joint and the tendons that we inject. So there is some research that repetitive cortisone injections can further thin out the cartilage five to 10% with repetitive injections over two to three years. And because of that, it is very important that we don't perform any more than two to three injections a year, specifically in joints, because there is at risk of further potentiating or accelerating the rate of arthritis progression. With tendons, cortisone does have the ability to weaken tendon for a short period of time. So I'm very careful when I inject around an area of a tendon to tell my patients to take it easy for at least a week, if not two, and then slowly increase their load thereafter to reduce any risk of tendon damage after the injection. One extremely rare side effect that can be seen with cortisone injections is avascular necrosis. Now, what is avascular necrosis or otherwise AVN? Essentially what that means is that the bones that create the joint don't have blood flow coming to them. And what happens is they start to collapse and we call that avascular necrosis. Now, should that happen, it is an extremely rare complication and it can happen from a variety of medications, trauma, or for no reason at all. And we call that iatrogenic. However, if it does occur, patients will likely need a replacement or salvage surgery. So it is quite serious should it ever happen. And the last cortisone side effect that I'll see in practice more particularly when I'm injecting superficial or areas that are close to the skin is skin hypopigmentation and atrophy. What does that mean? So cortisone injection has a known side effect that it will actually whiten skin if injected really, really close to the skin and atrophy or thin out the tissues in the area. So typically when we're doing tennis elbow injections or injections for a decurvin stenosynovitis, we do warn people that this can happen because the closer you are to the top of the skin, the more pronounced some of these uh, side effects can be, mainly the whitening of the skin and the atrophy of the skin. Now, with hyaluronic acid on the other hand, the side effect profile is actually much more favorable than cortisone. Other than the risks of the needle in the skin, there's one other big side effect that I may see with HA, and it, that's mainly due to the error of where it is placed in the body. Some people will have something called a post-injection HA synovitis, where it can look like an infected joint, but what it is is that it happens in the first day or so, and it is 
increased swelling and redness at the joint. And what happens is the HA molecules have seeped out of the joint a bit and are irritating the joint capsule. So you can get this like septic looking joint that isn't dangerous, that is just a little bit irritated and will settle down within a seven to 10 day period. But I call that a post HA synovitis. If that ever happens, I do encourage you to reach out to your provider, but that is really the other big side effect that I'll see from HA. Aside from that, it is a very safe medication. It is a synthetic version of what we have in our body. And because of that, many patients elect for this because it doesn't have as many side effects. So now that I've discussed the key differences between these injections, which one would I pursue? With all things else being considered and equal, I would start with a hyaluronic acid injection, mainly because it's got a more favorable side effect profile and a more favorable mechanism of action. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get back to them.